Puerto Rican kid, bald head, loves snakes, loves Blizzy, Sergio Chacon. Yeah. Yeah. What up, pa? Yo, Peace, peace, peace. Welcome to the BBS podcast. It's your boy, Sergio Chacon, a.k.a. Blizzy Chacon. That shit's whack. That means always going to be dirtbag shit podcast. The BBS podcast. What's up? Can you put the video on? Uh, yes. Hold on. Because what? I don't want to look at your picture. Because it's gorgeous. Hold on. Okay. Who does? Who does a zoom on their phone? Dirt bag. Oh, you look good. No, because <laughs> you look because... fresh. This quarantine has been good for you. You look well rested. Well, because I put a little makeup on. I'm I'm like not well rested. I'm tired. I'm cranky. I feel like. The stuff with the, the the homeschooling stuff has been so not cool, not not into it. What up, Kyle? How not, are you, my dear? I'm all right. Just trying to get something done in this quarantine shit. It's it's hard with kids, right? Not for me. My kid is well behaved. <laughs> yeah, I mean Charlie is like. Yeah, you have one kid. How I hard? know. I love when people complain, I can't do anything. You have one kid. <laughs> like I'm mad at everybody that I had three. Like I feel like it's everybody, the world's responsibility. You can't, you just can't win though, right? You can't win because there are people who don't have kids and they're like just fucking becoming winos. You know, they're like, oh, yeah. you know, and I, I need to go outside of my friends. Like no one's gonna be happy. Just a bunch well, of complaining think- people. Yeah, and I feel like my friends that don't have kids, like they're very productive. Like I see them in this quarantine, they're a new podcast, they're doing Zooms, they're doing like, they're making the best out of this situation, especially in terms of comedy. And I'm like, you know, people are like, oh, are you doing any Zoom comedy? I'm, no, cause I'm fucking homeschooling all day long. Then I gotta do laundry. Then I gotta like, my other job is hanging on by a thread. I got to at least do something so I can keep getting paid. It's crazy. So the one thing I did do, and I'm so mad at productive people. Like I'm very, very <laughs> jealous and angry at their success. <laughs> so when you see, oh, when I map my run, I bet that really pisses you off. When you oh, I'm that. getting infuriated infuriated when I see you do I'm doing zoom and yoga with my friend really I'm your best friend ass who are you doing this and why didn't you even ask me yeah I'm not available and I can't do it but I don't remember who you have. <laughs> and I don't know the first thing about yoga but it would have been nice to be able to ask me Sergio how do you find your the zoom stuff because I have to do zoom classes for the gym I do um a 30 minute no equipment body sculpt, which is just to help people at home. Like you don't have to have anything. And it's like, uh, it's weird. Cause like my cat gets in the way. Like I, I, I bring the camera down to do ab work on the floor and my cat's butt holes like right in the camera. Yeah. So yeah, unprofessional. Know, it's all like, so if that happens, that could be charming and funny in its own right. Cause that would never happen. Right. Unless we're in a situation like we're in. So you embrace that. But if like a pet is getting on your nerves, like I lock Curry up, I put her in the kennel. Um, and it's like a learning process. Like I remember when- Is I, Curry your alligator? <laughs> no, okay, I mean, Kelly, uh, Curry is like, my You have so pole. many endangered species in your house. I don't know what's what. <laughs> <laughs> no, Curry's my, my, she's my rescue. I saved your her life. <laughs> That's annoying when people say that. I think I may have said that in another uh, podcast when people say, I read, you know, you didn't run through a fire to pick up the I know, it just makes us feel better. But I guess you're not supposed to buy the puppy mill ones. They're right, so right. cute though. She, she's a great dog, right? But she gets in the way, I'm like, go back in the kennel, right? Little things like that make it easier. When I first did a Zoom, like I started, uh, excuse me, when I first did a live class, I started <laughs> with like my face mad close to the screen like this, and I live <laughs> class, and like, I'm like, hold up, and I lost connection, it was a mess. So the best thing is just have all that shit prepared already, and don't move the phone, right? You have oh, it, yeah. press play, and every, you just back up and do the class. I honestly, Kyle, I kind of like doing a Zoom class. Because you don't want to leave your house. You know, it's, oh. it, there's some benefits to it, yeah, but. No, but like, listen, 
you know when when we worked together at the Mac, I didn't need to. You know, I don't need to correct anyone's form. Like uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> I don't need to. Like see the people it. that are like, and you're like, pull your shoulders back. <laughs> oh God. I know. I don't it's need to so see frustrating. it. Frustrating. Uh, honestly, when it comes to like a group class live, I don't see what's going on. So I don't give a fuck. I mean, granted, I do like to help people. <laughs> But it's a live class. All I can do is worry about myself and my energy remaining at a certain level and being as clear as possible with the instruction. But I don't have to sit and yeah. slouched over, like, oh, yeah. what, what did you say? Like, I, can't, I don't have to compete with I that. I know. And I remember, like, right before, well, so you and I have worked together for as long as we've been doing, longer than we've been doing comedy together. Right. I don't know. But it's, um, of course, that's my daughter. I said, do not ring the buzzer when I'm doing the podcast. And she rings It's all because they're back Thank podcast. Um, but so I, I think what's so frustrating for me is in classes, it's like you want to help people. And you said this too. It's like we give them the corrections. And it's not personal training. So there's only so much we can do. And they don't do it. And they stay in like the bad form. And it's just, it's super frustrating. So <laughs> Yeah, and sometimes you got to resign to the fact that some people are just not gonna get it and they're not cut out for it. But the fact that they're moving a little bit, that's that, that makes them happy, you know? Benny, <laughs> Benny, stop. Okay, sorry. You're, you're grounded. Close the door. Nice excuse. Okay, close the damn door. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> don't, are we gonna, don't. Are we gonna cry. experience a, a <laughs> breakdown on the, on the podcast? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. That would be a lot. Oh, man, but not like a complete meltdown. I feel like I've I've been handling it well. Like I've been taking it day by day, and I've been like, my most important job is to try to get the kids like, because it's hard. I was reading an article that like my my youngest son is twelve, and they said that this the quarantine is the hardest for that age group because I think the rationale is like older kids, like I have a fifteen and seventeen, they get it, they don't love it, but they can still like go out and meet their friends and put the mask on and do, and then the real little kids are home with their parents, and then the parents sort of like say, okay, we're gonna do this, and you create a schedule. He's right in the middle. He misses his friends so much. He doesn't understand. So it's really hitting him very hard. And so I'm right. trying to do a schedule, but it's hard. like, I'm not a scheduled person myself. Like I'm, I'm not an organized, um, like I'm sort of just a uh, wing it person. So now to try to have to make my kids and be their fucking teacher. Oh, now I can't. That's, that's just for Betty though. The younger one, you don't have to be on top. Of I mean, I don't have to be like Robert's graduating, so he's um, he's basically almost done. Like he's you know he's just got to get like a couple more assignments, and he really doesn't. He's checked out. His whole his whole class checked out. You know, like a month ago, um, and it's a bummer because they don't get a graduation. Like a class of twenty twenty, it's it is a bummer. But at the same time, you know they're living through this historic pandemic that like maybe. 20 years from now, this will be like a great story. I don't know. That's what I tell him. But, um, but it's hard. Yeah. yeah, it's, it's tough. But I just want to like, I want to respect other people's health. And like, we obviously have to quarantine and, and this is necessary. But like trying to find ways to stay creative and trying to find for, for mental health, like you realize how important mental health and like, connection with each other in society and even just going out, you know, for walks, uh, something to, to fill the void of missing stand up. Like I really, you know, I always said to people, I never got into stand up to be like rich and famous and, and like Joe DeVito has that joke. And so far mission accomplished, <laughs> but <laughs> I love Joe. So, but funny. it's, but it's true because it's like, it's, it's almost like a cathartic, like I've been feeling a little depressed. Like the first week of the quarantine, great. Reset, nobody needs to do spots, this is good. Cleaned out a closet, felt productive. Week two, a little itchy, but still fine. Three, four, week five, I was like, I, I will do a check spot at LOL for free. Like I will, please, anybody, like I will do your bar show in Brooklyn with, with 14 spots shitty alt comics like put me on i'm bet you know it's a catharsis that we need and as as artists like i don't know i guess we got to find another medium but but it's hard 
Yeah, it's yeah, really hard. Yeah. I mean, you know what? I think writing a a schedule for me has been helpful. Mm -hmm. I got this whiteboard. And ah. I write shit down, and it's little things, right? Because what I, what happens is, if I look at uh at everything that was possibly lost or what the uncertainty of the future is, it be it could become overwhelming. So every day I got this whiteboard, and I'll write yeah. it out. And the, the the goal will be like like simple shit. It might not be the same thing you may want to do, but like a push up challenge. Boom. Um, edit a podcast. Boom. Uh, work out with Charlie, boom. And those are three things. And because they're, yeah. they're physically in front of me and I get the uh, the satisfaction of checking them off, it feels good. Because what happens is, if we don't do that, then we just feel like we're all over the place. It's kind yeah. of mixed. You're, with... you're just reacting to things instead of yes. like planning it out. And yeah, no, right. don't so do that. So the plan and what checking off and, you know, and having that uh, that system has helped me immensely. And it's, it's a very simple thing. It's not like, oh yeah, what I do is I wake up at five o'clock in the morning, I meditate. And then I, no, it's not like that. It's more like, I just write out the shit that I want to do. And then I, I feel more myself being clear headed. I may be able to do those same things, right? But if I don't mm -hmm. write it out, I forget that I did it. I forget what I yeah. accomplished throughout the day. You know what I'm saying? Or that's like even the same as like sometimes, and I'm not as consistent um, with like lists before bed. They say that's the best time. For me, it makes it harder to fall asleep because I'm like, oh, I have to do all this tomorrow. So I do sometimes, like I'll wake up in the morning and I'll try to do those morning pages, like just fill up three pages. And it could be anything. It could be stream of consciousness. It could be, I'm sick of writing. I don't want to do this. But you fill up three pages. So when I do that, it's like I get stuff out of here onto paper and then I can go attack the day a little bit better. Right. But right. you've always been good at, you know, especially physical stuff. Like when we did the tour in um, Honduras and Greenland, like you were up. I remember in Honduras, it was super hot and you got up and I think you knocked on the door and I, I was, I was like, yeah, wake me up at six. I'll go for a run. And then I like, <laughs> yeah, I was training for the marathon at that time, which by the way, we had a great time. On that, what was it, the USO tour? Uh, AFB, yeah. Glad you paid attention. <laughs> Yo, I don't know where the other, the other company, yeah. <laughs> AFB tour. That was a great time. We hit the Bahamas, we hit Honduras, we hit, what, what yeah. else? Where else did we go? Um, uh, Greenland. Greenland? Yeah, that was, Greenland was crazy. How about that 11 p.m. Uh, midnight sun, or the midnight sun? We were out at midnight and yeah, it was. Yeah. It was it was a good time, and you know, listen. The, the thing is, don't let any of this stuff get too far away from you because you're the one who ad, uh, administrated all that. You like not only were you a performer on that show, like you were like the lead on that shit, and that requires like planning. That requires like yeah. a certain intelligence, and and to get that shit together. So make sure that right after this quarantine, you book another show, okay? If you want to ever be on, I show. actually am booked for. Um tentatively i mean who knows what's happening it was supposed to be in may and then it got pushed and i'm supposed to be doing uh some places in europe but in in oh, nice. august so i i mean i don't know we'll see what happens but it's we, coming we, from we had, a, we had a good time i mean we had such the a fun the time. first stop was the bahamas right that was my favorite part was watching mike gaffney have a panic attack getting on that plane he just kept going la bamba la bamba that plane looks like la bamba i'm not i don't know guys and then me you and joyelle we were so excited we we're like yay we're getting on this plane we're gonna fly into those little clouds like it was such an adventure and then you we pin over to mike's face and he was like he looked horrified yeah, it was a small ass plane we were in florida that was our connected flight to the bahamas right and i looked at him <laughs> And he, for some reason, he just looked like his, he had no neck. He, like his face got bigger. Cause that's what, that was his defense. Like a turtle goes on his shell. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he had his bag and his bag looked really small to me. It looked like a bib, <laughs> right? He had like this duffel bag. And he was like, we're doing this for comedy. We're doing this for, <laughs> we're doing this to tell jokes. He's and like, I, like, I don't want to die a middle act. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he was like, we're doing this. We're, we don't have to do this. We're doing this for jokes. And then he went in and like he hit his head <laughs> of the Oh my God. But it he was, was a nervous so, wreck. That was but so guess, fun. It was Yeah, I think that who like under stress make you laugh. And I don't mean to laugh. I wasn't laughing at him. 
but I was laughing at him. Like it was yeah, like I, yeah. I felt I it because I was felt, I was a little nervous too. But he made me laugh so much because it was kind of like comedic, but he was fearful for his life, and the concoction of both was hilarious. I was like, crying. I just like. He just kept saying La Bamba. That looks like the La Bamba plane. <laughs> like, and every now and then I would look to the side and he would look out the small ass window and just, just shake his head like. I was fine until I saw our pilot playing, um, I think it was Best Fiends or something on his phone. I'm like, aren't you supposed to be flying this? And he was on his laptop playing a game. Or maybe yeah. it was Angry Bird or Flappy or whatever, one of those things. And I was like, all right, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then we, 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 get, we get to the Bahamas. And remember that lady? She puts She's like, you will not kneel. <coughs> you will not kneel on my base. Yeah. Call so Kaepernick. this is during the time when, uh, like, uh, Kaepernick and, you know, the kneeling for the national anthem was like, that was like current event news. we didn't news. say we were going to do that. Nobody we said we were going to do anything. It. But like sporadically throughout the day, there was a system. What was it? It was like 12 noon. What was it like? Yeah, they, they play like the national anthem and you're supposed to like stop or something. And, you know, OK, well, yeah. Fine. So you, you stop everything you're doing. And she said, you are required to stop everything you're doing. Now, you don't have to put your hand on your heart, but you will stop what you're doing. And if anyone takes a knee, I will kick you off my base. And I was like. Who, like, who the hell is this woman? And then she looked at, like, the one African-American comic. I know, Joy, Joy, I was like, mm, mm. That was wild. That and was it's crazy. crazy because, like, I, I didn't know how to take that. Like, we were all like, what the fuck? Like, in a little buggy. She was giving us a little tour, and then out of nowhere, it says this wild-ass shit. My favorite on that whole tour, I, I'm... You know, Greenland was cool, like being, it, it did look like Mars and it was, uh, their summer was 40 degrees. But my favorite was definitely Honduras because like I loved seeing the soccer players and I loved like, we were all kind of nervous because you're told it's a very dangerous country. Um, but we were only off the military base to drive there. And even on the military base, because there were so many Hondurans, it was so cool to, to like feel a tiny bit of the culture because... I've done a lot of tours in a lot of countries and sometimes um, you go straight from the airport to the base and you don't get to see a lot. And I feel like when we were in Honduras, we did get to like experience, like, first of all, the hot, hot weather, the, the mountains, we were right in the mountains. Yeah, it was really yeah. beautiful. And um, I, I loved it. I thought it was. Really I, I remember cool. like, I didn't know that originally Honduras was a shared base. It was like a Honduras military, a Honduras yeah. military base that allowed the U S yeah, uh, you know, it was a shared base, which was interesting because that's why we got the, the 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 sense of the culture and like the yeah the soldiers and everything. And that they had really a lot cool. of Puerto Ricans. A lot of Puerto Ricans are based in Hon uh, on Honduras because they need American servicemen who speak Spanish. So uh, there's a ton of Puerto Ricans there. Um, Joelle, I remember <laughs> she was like she had like five five guys she was talking to me that night. It was so fun. We yeah. had such a fun time after. I, I, but I, I, that I, show that was horrendous. That was the worst show for okay. me. And oh, know, you, know I, what, you know what's I, crazy? I, I closed and it was by the time I got on, you hosted that. You were great. Gaffney struggled a bit. Joelle struggled a bit. By the time I got on stage, they were just full blown conversing. It was, yeah, I mean, off. it's just one of those things. I mean, listen, we're conditioned and we're trained to handle all those situations. The thing is, when I think I'm going on the road to another country to perform, I don't think I'm going to do what may feel like a bar show. Like, that wasn't anything. Right, right, I, right, I, right. I've heard, I've heard, you know, like it wasn't like I was completely caught off guard. And it wasn't like that but it kind of was like that right because yeah. the people wanted comedy and they knew there was going to be comedy but the organizer of this shit is just like walks up to us he yeah. has two question marks he above has, his he head like a rave. Like, i said could you turn off the i asked him if he could turn off the disco it was literally like a rave and and gaffney said it looks like we're telling ghost stories because right. it's just like this bright light on your face it was like weird and i'm like this is not conducive for, for comedy and that happens sorry that happens a lot sometimes in these shows is that yeah. you go to perform for people but they don't know what a comedy club setup is supposed right, to be right, and right, so they right. think they're doing something good for you by you know having rave lights and it's like no this is bad but right but it was right. so fun i mean every, you know listen 
the Bahamas show, if we go in chronological order, the Bahamas show, it's funny because you had like a great time. You ripped that show. And I remember feeling like, eh, it was so, so. So it's interesting how yeah. like the placement or where your head, where you're at in your head. Mm -hmm. Granted, the Honduras show was a hard show. The Bahamas show was an easier show. So I got, yeah. if I was to say I didn't have that much fun, I was probably my own doing. The Honduras show was a tough show. Like Do people you were like, I got, I remember going up on the Honduras show and I remember I had all this material I created throughout the day because I was like, I'm on this base, I'm a gather, observe, and you know, and what's accessible yeah, yeah. to me. And I'm gonna, you know, improvise with the, with the material I wrote today. And I went up and the first 30 seconds, there was chit chatter. I was bombing was with all tough, this new yeah. shit. And then I was, and I was like, Wait, hold up. I told the audience, I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. We are here for you. You're not going to pull this shit on me. I like, like when you yell at people. <laughs> you I got upset. But then I when went into my... Pissed, you yell at people. <laughs> <laughs> then I, go, I went to my regular shit that works, and it got them. And, you know, but all that shit that I had in my mind, I was like, oh, this is going to be so funny. It's off the cuff kind of thing that I developed a few hours ago. That shit was bombing. And then when I went to the good stuff, I got them, but... It was fun. It was interesting. Did this to me. Cigarettes did this to me. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think I brought that one out. Don't, don't age my uh, material. Do you remember like 10 years ago at Broadway Comedy Club when you like screamed that audience member? You're like, yo, what, what you, what'd you say, I know. man? What'd you say? I was like, Ooh. Yeah, I'm not, always, I'm not always the smoothest when I get, when I get, oh, uh, I'm not, it's I mean, it. I think you and I have seen each other do some when, earlier on, when we were newer, I remember doing a show in Queens with you, and you were laughing so hard because I said something to the crowd. Like I, you know, it's it's a it's a classic like new comic thing to like get really angry at the audience. And I remember the audience. I said something like, "You guys suck. I'd rather get dragged naked across glass. I hate you guys. I hate you." And you, you were like, do it. "You were you like, do it, in that. it wasn't you even do funny." It. It wasn't even funny. I no, was no, no, no. Like, it was funny. You didn't. First of all, let me let's be one. You didn't do it in that white girl fried vocal voice because you don't talk like that. You were, like it was. For, and, and to your defense, it was one of the, those Aldo shows. It was know? like an ambush show. Like nobody yeah, wanted. Yeah, it was like at a, it was like at a hookah bar. There was like yeah. one waitress there with with implants and like well, up to here. She's serving drink, and there was an audience of like four, which is probably like all those co-workers from the shoe store. Right. You know, like seriously. And it was like <laughs> me, you, Pudge, like Dave Lester. Like it was that sort of show. So you gotta understand, you go up and, and Aldo, like he did like 30 seconds up top, brings you up, I think you went first. And like no one was engaged. So you At said, uh, you were like, oh, you know what? This is some bullshit. I'd rather be dragged across <laughs> glass than to do this fucking show. And that was like hilarious. Cause I felt your pain. But you, yeah. you, didn't, you didn't you didn't come out off as defeated. It was frustrating. That's fine. It's so funny because I just I remember some of those some of those bad moments. But you know, and that's I think what I worry about now is like whenever comedy, who knows when comedy is gonna come back. Like um, I think somebody I retweeted a tweet, I think it was Sam, maybe Sam Morell or I think it was Sam Morell. He said something like it takes 10 years to get good at comedy and two weeks to get bad. I'm like, we're all gonna suck. Imagine like even like national headliners are going to go up and be like, oh, what else can I tell you? Like, it's just going to yeah, be like, I worry quick. about that. I was, I was thinking about my set and I was like, I don't even remember how I start. And I was like, I know I, it, I, I know, start with like, I, I do a joke about my son up at, you know, in the Xbox at the top. And I'm like, man, it's just such a weird such a weird thing, but maybe this is good. Maybe, I, maybe no, it is good. It, it's it, you know, listen. I think it's good to have something taken away from you. That, I, and I'm not saying you personally, but anyone, right? Um, it's like now you have to dig in, right? And and then you 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 become more grateful. You know, yeah, you become more grateful for it. And however yeah. way we got to figure it out, we got to be innovative with it. There are tools that are accessible to be creative, and and you know, and we have to be gentle with ourselves. It's only 30 days in, but it feels much yeah. longer because it's so new to us. You know, like yeah, when yeah. you talk about, uh, you know, the homeschooling thing. Yeah, the homeschooling shit is frustrating for you because you're not a teacher. Yeah. Oh, and you oh. also have your own life you want to li live. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? We all have that shit in us. Like, 
I don't, I didn't sign up for this. Like, yo, you should see when my daughter comes out with her fractions, I pretend I have to walk the dog. Oh, oh <laughs> Luckily, I, that's the, the most, yeah, the, the hardest thing about this whole quarantine is learning that I don't know how to help a sixth grader yeah, with that. No, I'm the like, worst I thing can't. about this quarantine Sorry, is that mommy's I, a dumbass. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I I, I'm know. reminded how academically <laughs> challenged I am. Like, I'm good with physical stuff, but if you give me, like, math, any sort of math equation, the the th the, the sound of a math problem being worked out, I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom. Ready. Yeah, I'm, like, walking my dog. My dog is looking at me like, we went outside 12 times already. Can you give me a break? Luckily, and we're from Liz the generation... Is like we're from the generation before they did like ADHD and we were just, we were daydreamers and it's like, that shit is real because it's coming back to haunt. Like I'm trying to help my kid and I'm just like, right now my brain is trying to make an excuse because I don't know how to zero in and focus. Yeah, on something I don't know. I don't know why you don't have your kids working for you. I will have my oldest helping the younger one and that would be the chore it would be like a cast uh, like a system we've tried that doesn't i said a cast that. system who says that we've yeah no that's everybody ends in tears when that happens it's not <laughs> it's not a good thing but um i don't know i feel like the only thing i'm really staying disciplined on it is the workouts like good. i'll do the at home stuff like i'll do i actually because we do the live classes at, at the mac but I'll jump on YouTube, I'll watch a video, I'll be, I've been going for a run, my cardio is getting better because there's nothing else to focus on, you know, so I've been running more. Um, but yeah, I gotta, I just, it, I, I like your schedule idea. I gotta do that whiteboard yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, if I can, it, it help. Which by the way, I think it's important to share with anybody who's interested in how I started classes, you were actually the first person who trusted me. <laughs> you, Why? You must, I know. I you think you, the been... first time I met you, I'm pretty sure you were like trying to hit on me. And I was just like, um, I remember I was, I was out of work. I was out of work at this time. I, I recently got laid off from a, um, I, I was managing like a loft space. Liz was pregnant with Charlie. And this was, like, no, but I met you before, before. Oh, that's Liz. right. No, yeah, yeah. Wait, tell me, Liz was At the Laugh Lounge, at the yeah. prestigious Surge's Fresh Faces. Fast forward, we knew each other years before that, but I was in, uh, out of work. I know I was out of work. And he was like, hey, you box. I have a, a, a class I need to fill in. Would you want to do a boxing class? And I, I remember like, yes. because when I first met you at the Laugh Lounge, you're like, yeah, I work out a lot. And I was like, <laughs> never wrong. spoke like that. You look, I work out, I do boxing. I look like a lizard under a, leak, a heat oh, lamp. Oh, God. <laughs> Dirt bag. But that's how I started. That's how I started my lucrative career. Yeah. No, but I, I do remember when you came in and you taught that boxing class, they loved you. And that was so fun. And then, and and yeah, that, that at that point you were with Liz and she was pregnant with Charlie. And um yeah, you just really got, you got so good as a trainer and now you're like super sought after and everybody likes you and whatever. And I'm sitting at home <laughs> trying to do a damn Zoom. And now, and now I'm a, 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 a premier Zoom trainer. <laughs> Yo, it's all going to get old real quick. I'm going to put my foot through the, through the computer screen <laughs> six hours from now because it all gets old. It's new and refreshing for, to me right now. But give me six more yeah. hours and I'll be like, oh, no, I'm actually having fun with it. I realize how much I um I could do I could do I could do without people. I realize <laughs> that's what was quarantine. I could do without people for a long period of time. I don't yeah. miss anybody. Like I'm looking at you right now. I there's not one part like, of me that's like, I missed you, Kyle. It's like I don't care. <laughs> you know, like I see your bullshit on Instagram, like that's enough. I've had enough. And I mean, it's, I get it. I look at your dumb, bald ass head and I'm like, oh, glad I don't have to see that at a club. I'm glad I don't have to listen to her. It's show. so fun, though. We've been in friends for so long that we've seen each other at each other's most extreme emotion. You saw when I first oh. came up to you and I was like, Liz is pregnant. I don't want to have the baby. <laughs> And I go, I and you were like, it, you were like, you were like, it'll be fine. It will be fine. I have three and, and, I, and, and, and you get through it. It's fine. You were like consoling me. Right. I mean, 
And then, you know, fast forward to recently when we were on the tour, I remember <laughs> you had a great set. Like, you were like, you killed. You close. My, my son loves this story, by the way. He loved hearing you tell the story. Oh, it's was- so funny. So we had, it's the first stop on the tour. We're in the Bahamas. We're eating. I think we were even, like, signing an autograph. It was a and great like, show. And, and yeah, and then you looked at me, you like, you like, Sergio, I'll be right back. I'm just going to talk to my son. Thank you so much. Yes, yes, thank you. I'm going to, I'll give you a picture with an autograph. One moment. We got, yes, I got a, a few pictures for you guys. I'll be right back. You went to the kitchen, right? Because where we were performing was like a barn with a, with a, with a kitchen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you, and then you spoke to your son. You're like, Robert, I need you to calm the fuck down. And you do not talk to me that way. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Robert, you selfish. I'm in the Bahamas trying to work right now. And how, yes. Oh, thank oh, you. Yes. We'll be at another oh, base no. next week. I am so embarrassed. Like, I. Oh, that was I don't awesome. Think anybody understands the fury of talking to a 16 year old who's like getting an attitude with you, and you're like, you know, in the middle, like you're thousands of miles away. He, one time when I was in Kuwait, he called me, forgot about the time difference, woke me up in the middle of the night and was like, do you know where my blue sweater is? <laughs> what? No, I'm in another continent. I don't know where your damn sweater is and it's three o'clock in the morning. So when he called me in the Bahamas, I don't remember what, if he was asking me to transfer him money or I don't know what it was, but I was like, I'm at a show right now. And he's like, yeah, but mom, just one more question. I'm like, do not talk to me right now. I'm like, I mean, you were laughing because I had like an exorcist voice and I didn't even realize that. And I, and I, what's scary is I switched to like, hey, you guys, I'll be right there. What did I do? And it was just oh, insane. so funny. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm funny. a little embarrassed about that, but it was, uh, no, it was the raw, it was the realest and raw. So I was like this. You were, you were like, you were doing damage control, but also laughing. You were just like, I think I can hear you. Uh, yeah, I was like eating and like laughing. Cause you know, after these shows, I, I can't drink anymore. Cause you know my problem, right? So I'm eating like cheese doodles, like this and, and excess, like, this, and like <laughs> laughing. Oh, so funny, man. Oh my but God. What a great time. Crazy. That was actually, you know, I mean, that tour was a, a lot of fun. Definitely a comedy highlight, hanging out with you guys. And you know, it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of Yeah, fun. no, it was great. It was great. And it, and it's, you know, you, you are one of my best friends. So I had wanted to definitely do a tour with you because, you know, doing these shows, um, I mean, there's definitely, there's a ton of comics that always want to do it and that's great. And you have to not only like pick people because like it's, it, it's not my, ever my final decision. There's always like a, a person that I have to pass through and say, hey, do you approve right. of the, this person? And there's been plenty of hilarious professional amazing picks but then sometimes i'm like i heard they're kind of a diva i heard they're a little bit of a pain in the ass yeah like, you don't know how much you're dealing with when you're spending that much time and, with somebody it's a lot spending, of time we we had a shorter tour i've done tours that were three weeks long and and i was luckily with great people so but I, I i mean i don't really think i've ever had a bad experience knock on wood um because i pick people that are funny but are also like fun people that I, and if I don't know them really well, like other people are like, oh no, this person's great. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Yeah, no, you so got a good judge of character. Yeah, because yeah, because it's, that it would be a, like, That would be a nightmare to be like in another country, yeah. three, you know, for three weeks. Yeah, yeah. And it's <laughs> like, you know, and you know these tours aren't like super glamour. I mean, sometimes you stay, I've had like, we stay in five-star hotels sometimes and that's really fun. But like, you just know, you gotta get up, you gotta go see the dogs, you gotta like, you're, sometimes they make you meet at 11 a.m. and you have I know, to like, be tired and you, you know, it, and people all don't the, know that. The traveling, yeah, and then they got an itinerary for you. And I yeah. remember, I mean, the hardest one is when, Greenland, you and Joyelle, right? I have, because a, picture, we, I have you, a picture of you and Joyelle sleeping because yeah. you guys were so tired. Well, you remember how it went down? Chair. It was like, I'm not sure if the tour was trying to save money, but we flew to like St. Louis or Baltimore. Baltimore, yeah. Baltimore, we flew to Greenland. And then we yeah. arrived. So we left like a night and, uh, and I don't know when the hell we left. Some it was crazy, like, like, some crazy. Remember we stayed at a hotel in Baltimore wait, 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 for like two wait, hours. Remember this? So when we stupid. get to Greenland, it, it felt like nighttime for us because the, the time was trained. So we wanted yeah. to go to sleep, but it was like eight o'clock in the morning in Greenland. And then like a soldier with a little cadet hat. She had like the Janet Jackson hat. Remember that yes, Janet Jackson video? Like, oh, a little cadet. And she was super like- she was too happy. 
she reminded me of a Jack Russell. She was extra hyper. She was like, hey, she you ready was Yo, too we happy. Had, we had a schedule, dogs. We had to do like 12 different things. And I looked like a heroin addict. I was like, <laughs> but it was great, but it was just a little too much. It was, yeah, and I remember I asked her, I was like, is there any way we could go back to the hotel and sleep? She goes, well, when are you gonna see the base or something? And we were kind of like, we don't give a shit. Like, we want to go to sleep. And the whole base looked like Mars, right? That's yeah. what we, it was just, it was, um, <clears throat> Greenland is, is a country, it's mostly ice. There's only 55,000 people in the entire country and it's big because it's mostly uninhabitable. Yeah. And we were, you know, it was cool and everything, but oh man. It, it we was cool, so remember? Awesome. I mean, there was like the two, um, uh, I guess you call them soldiers. I mean, there were two guys in a room and they're looking at this big ass screen and their job for 12 hours out the day is to look at that screen to make sure there's no like they, they spy UFOs on Russia. or missiles. I don't know if we're supposed to say that, yeah. <laughs> I know, we can edit it. We'll, we'll I'm pretty sure that's out. confidential. No. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's just like, it's crazy, right? And like, they had to rotate these guys because they'll get real tired. Yeah. Like, they didn't have yeah. these guys there for like four months. And then they switch them. But like, literally, they had a screen and they just look at this graph. And they yeah. look, just to see if a missile or a plane is going in that direction. And that's I it. I couldn't do that. That's like, you might as well be a telemarketer. Like you're just sitting around bored and then waiting for that one magazine to get sold. You know, it's, yeah, it's, it's nuts. Tough. Yeah. It's nuts. I don't know. I don't know. But so, it, was, it, was, it, was an, it was, it was an awesome experience, man. It was. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've changed your life in many ways. Who would have thought, ways, Kyle, you know? that you will be, what, what, what did you say? What did I you said say? I've changed your life in many ways. If it weren't for me, you'd, be in, a, changes, you'd be in a ditch snorting coke off a Metro card right now, and you know it. <laughs> DBS! Who said Certified. that? I give myself so much credit. No, I know. You're, you're, I, very, you're incredibly disciplined. I give, you, you really are. I'm very impressed. Well, I'm <clears> Not you. with much else. <laughs> I mean, you got you to pat yourself on the back, right? I mean, you're from a small, t- a small town in Ohio. Well, I'm from Cleveland, I, but, I, but it is good for, you know, story purposes to pretend like I grew up in a cornfield. That's what most people do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, who would have thought you'd be traveling the world doing stand-up? Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know what I, I was thinking about that just, I was looking through um, our old texts. We have written some horrific texts to each other. Oh, we're nasty. Oh, we're nasty. I'm so glad you brought that up because honestly, I do prepare. Even if it's someone, someone like you, I write bullet points on what we got to talk about. And one of them was the text exchange. And this is like, it's, it's, it's a known fact amongst comics. And then it's like, you're, we're friends, but especially comic friends, you say the most the disturbing vile, horrible, shit. Disturbing. For example, I remember one time um, I said, I wasn't going to, I don't know, something along the lines where I wasn't going to be able to meet you at a certain time. And you're like, why? Are you doing cocaine like your, your, your crackhead father who died of AIDS? And I'm like, what? <laughs> and I was like. And then you hit me back even harder. Yeah, I went harder. I, you're like, yeah, you're going to end up dead like your father. And I'm like, oh, dead like your mother? <laughs> and guess what? My father slept with <laughs> so now that you wrote now your mother you know your mother is an angel with AIDS. <laughs> yeah, so I said <laughs> Yeah, my father my father is dead in heaven with your mother <laughs> and now he, she's an angel with AIDS. <laughs> Do you remember we, when you got me so good on it was your birthday it was september 11th your birthday yay what a day to celebrate um it was a couple years ago and i said i did some some joke about like you know the usual like uh maybe you can pray to your dad and uh you know pray that that he's up in heaven watching over you smoking mac or something along something like tasteless along those lines and you wrote like yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just not really feeling that right now. Maybe it's because it's my birthday and I kind of miss my dad. And I was like, oh my God, I'm so, I was like, I'm really sorry. Like I, I maybe I went too far. And I, and I, was I, like, I had you going for like 10 hours. And, and then, and then you met up with, you were at the gym and I said, um, 
do you want to like, I feel like we went to the health food store or something and you were just like real quiet. And I was like, sir, I'm seriously, I'm really sorry. Like I, 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 I apologize. It's just that we usually joke like that. And you're like, it's my birthday and I'm a little down. And then you're like, just kidding. DB. I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> And then do you remember the time you told me that another comic was talking shit about me? <laughs> and I was like, and I, in that particular comic, I was like, oh, I was like angry. And I was yeah. like, well, I'm probably I think, I think I, I played it off so well that I think you're still like mad at him. Even I'm though mad at that person and they didn't even do anything because you didn't tell, you told me. I feel you're like, like so gullible. You're same like, same you're like Marty McFly from Back to the Future. Don't be so gullible, McFly. You're mad gullible. You I trust am. me too much. I am. Well, because sometimes you really come, like, you, I don't know why I keep I'm a classically trained that. actor. That's what it is. I'm oh a classically God. trained actor. <laughs> yeah, but the fact that I told you that your mother is an angel with AIDS <laughs> right now because my father's banging her in heaven <laughs> is dirtbag and super funny. That, I, I love that, it. That is super I love it. Bad. I think we even posted one of our texts one time. I think we said, the deeper the friendship, the the harder the harder the roast, or something like that. <laughs> but you're a dirtbag too. Like you, you you tell me things that I'm just surprised by. Like when you you told me like when you first moved to New York, and I love this story. You told oh, me when cab. you first moved to New York, you would take a cab because you were broke as shit, right? You're just a broke <laughs> artist. You would take a cab, um, three blocks. And then you would tell the cab, oh, stop right here. I forgot oh my, God, my I'm wallet. I'm so sorry. I forgot my money. I forgot my wallet. And then you would get out the cab and then haul, hail another cab, go three blocks. And be like, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. I forgot my wallet. And then make your way to, like, the Bronx. To my destination. <laughs> I love that. That is grimy. I didn't know Cleveland had a hustlers like that. I, I don't know what would possess. I mean, I did some, yeah. I mean. I've, I've, Man, I I like some crazy things. Simply irresistible. <laughs> My kid just walked by. We'll have to hold that story. Simply irresistible. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's going to be on the, that, that'll be a, on the Patreon episode. That'll be a bonus. <laughs> you got to pay for that. That's a good story. But yeah, I moved here. Story. It's I so moved funny. Here in 93. I moved here right after high school. When you could still be like, this is how, how I'm dating myself. People are like, how old are you? I'm like, I'm, I could afford to live in New York when I first moved here old. Like I now, had. So how did that happen? No, that's interesting because like anyone who's listening to this, like, yeah, man, how the fuck do you like, you didn't have any roommates. How did that happen? 1993. No, 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 I had a roommate. So my, my best friend from what Ohio. What inspired the move to New York? Well, I used to, I was a, a trained dancer, like ballet dancer. And I okay. wanted to. I used to That's watch why your feet court. look like that, yo. Oh, uh, I I wanted to like I saw a chorus line when I was like 13 and I was like, I'm moving to New York. And you know, I, I read a story that Madonna moved here with $34 in her pocket. And I was like, I'm gonna do that. And I I right after high school, I my best friend had moved here the year before. And how'd you get I here? Came, you, took, you took a Greyhound bus? No, I, well, I originally, I actually, uh, my mom wanted me to go to college. So I auditioned for Juilliard. I didn't, I, I made like the, there was a couple cuts. I made the first cut. And then I, then the, after that, I, they asked me and I was like, eh, I'm not going to go to, I'm not going to go to college. I'm not going to go to Juilliard. So I just came back here and I, my friend had an apartment on Avenue A and East 6th street. Wow. And, um, the, the, she was squatting. That's right around the corner from where I live now. Yeah, she. We were squatting in the apartment. We didn't have gas or electric because they know we were there. So it was so like we a were... vacant. Uh, wow. Yeah. That's and the then, way a lot of these tenements were. Like a lot of people lived in these apartment buildings and it was that beautiful. weren't even really running. It was a duplex. It had a little spiral staircase, and it was a, a really great apartment. And uh, my upstairs neighbor were these two gay guys and one of, they hated us because like one of our friends, our, our female friends like hit on him and he's like, I'm not straight. Like you need to respect me. And she's like, yeah, you're not straight yet. And so he hated no! us. And That's like reverse just, harassment. Yeah, it was, oh, it was total harassment. You know when you hear reverse racism and which by the way, it's all bullshit. Harassment is harassment. 
Racism it was is racism. Ter- it, was, it was terrible. And so we were like, we would like laugh because she'd be like, I need to go hit on your neighbor. And like, and we're like, well, he's gay. And she's like, I'm just going to keep annoying him because he was really cute. So when he was just like really annoyed by her. So finally one day I was talking to him and I was like, yeah, like he said something about he, they were going to move. And I was like, well, we're not moving because we're not paying anything. And the stupidest thing I ever said, because then he told on us. Oh, and then we got, we came home one day, there was a sign on the door that said, you have 48 hours to get out or we're going to confiscate But who was kicking you out? The, I guess the management company, like the, the apartment had, my friend had lived there, moved out, and then one day went back with the keys to see if they worked and they did. And she's like, F it, let's move in. Oh, so we I were there. It. So like, yeah, yeah, I get it. So the building itself wasn't like a squatter building. You were no, just squatter. No, no. Okay. Yeah, because there were, like, there were buildings like that, that the entire oh, yeah. building and like a- apartments would be occupied by squatters. Yeah. And it's like, I, I always tell like, you know, people like, I know every- it's fun. Everybody shits on millennials and I don't want to be that way, but I will because, you know, nowadays you can't have that that crazy new york experience like there was a heroin addict in front of my building like it wasn't dangerous it was just seedy it was just like a seedy hood you know and and there was some weird charm to it and you know now it's like you gotta have you gotta know your father hope he's on the board of a luxury building to like it's not the same in it and i'm you know not that i want new york to be dangerous again but i'm so happy that like I'm of the generation where you could just have a dream, be from the Midwest and move here. You know, you yeah. cannot do that now. So Yeah. I mean, you got you could do it, but you You gotta um, have a lot of money. You gotta have a lot of money. And that's what that's what's changed about it. So I feel like the 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 artist from another a state doesn't really get to develop here because they're so hung up on this, yeah. you know, they 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 they, they have to use all their money to pay Just for their apartment. So yeah. no creative people are coming out of here anymore. If anything, creative people are moving out of here to other places. Where they're going, I don't know. But I, I, yeah. don't feel like I, I don't feel like I've come across like a young, and maybe I just don't know, the, like I, I'm, my eyes are not open to it, but very rarely do I see or hear like, just like a young <laughs> poor person from New York who's like super creative, like, oh shit. Like that, that's yeah. what you're doing? Yeah. I mean, I guess they are. I don't know, am I bugging? Like, you know, like the, the guy that wrote Rent, like that doesn't happen anymore. Like that, yeah. you'd, you'd, and I know that's like such a cheesy commercial thing to say, but he really did like, that was his life. And he wrote about the East Village and then in a, it got uh, it got made in the mid nineties, like right before yeah. he, or right or, after or, he died. Or, or, or maybe something. we're just, we just haven't seen it developed yet, right? Because maybe these guys- It's just fake. Like, I just feel like it's, I, I love New York City so much. I mean, I'm still here. I'm raising my kids here. Like, I think there's so many benefits to it, even though it's changed a lot. Um, you, you can't get the social education you get in New York City you, anywhere else. You just can't. And I yeah. love that. But it is there's a little bit of bullshit. You know, there's a little bit of fake. Like, every time I see, like, a 20-something and they're like, yeah, I'm just, like, trying to make it as a writer. I live in Soho. Like, okay, yeah. so who well, the, the, the the, You know, the, you know, the yeah. thing is, the, the whole landscape has changed. And it's, it, it's two-sided, right? Like, it's very interesting because there's still the same struggles, but a lot of it is not so much of what you do creatively, but what you do socially that makes you pop, right? Yeah. So it's like, mm, yeah. you could be a very talented person, but if you don't got the concoction of like a certain style or you don't have a social media presence, like yeah. you're not really pushed forward. And that's where we're at. Absolutely. And the, the thing is that, that makes this interesting is like everyone has a chance, but people who are being propelled, like push forward are not really deserving in a lot of, in oh, a yeah. lot of places. That, oh, totally. Like, right? So you'll get like, or, or, let's say for example, like a rap artist who doesn't have the talent, but he has a certain uh, appeal about him that people yeah. will gravitate to it. And it's, it's almost like people gravitate more to chaos and absolutely or than, even than like the actual like the 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 special thing about them and there's so many to choose from and we're just in a day and age where there's a lot more of that like there's a lot more noise mm-hmm. they don't last long though that's the thing and hopefully the other things surface and stick but who yeah knows? i don't know it's all bullshit i guess right <laughs> <laughs> 
Mm. But, but I do mm. like the landscape of the fact that we um you do you can make your own thing. Like that the idea of like waiting on like a production company or something to 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 uh, to assist you or whatever is not yeah. really needed. If you wanted to put in the work, it it can it, it, it can, yeah. It's hard for it people can, like me who are lazy though. Like, can't I just find someone to just do it all for me and get me rich? Like, I gotta do it myself. Well, what do you want? You want to be uh, rich, or you want to be known for your art, or what? Do, or you want it all? You got it all. You're rich. No. You're rich for knowledge of uh, the old lower. <laughs> I feel like as this goes on, you're going more inward. I want to be a life coach. I want to. I want to start doing TED talks. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> how do How does one uh qualify for a TED talk? I think you just write them or something and be like, "Hi, can I talk about you know the feminist perspective in the postmodern industrial era?" Like, I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. I've seen, like, I used to think TED Talks were so prestigious, and there are, there are actually some kick-ass ones that, have, that are really, really good. But I've seen some people that I know, and I'm like, uh, what? <laughs> like, how are you giving a TED Talk? <laughs> Yo! So I don't know. You got to say some names. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll tell you later. <laughs> Get it on text, like, oh shit, I gotta check that. Because when comedy comes back, I want them to book me. So, <laughs> yo, what do you think? What do you think? So, like, I, mm -hmm. I don't know the pers I, I don't really have a, a perspective on it because I, um, I just don't know. I don't know, like, how long any of the, like, put it like this. I'm at a stage with this where I don't even want to do anything, and two. I don't want to be in a social setting because my mother's older. She has a pre-existing condition and I don't want to be irresponsible in those regards. That's like, very thoughtful. I, my I get my mother sick. I don't give a shit. I don't <laughs> give a shit. And my kids, they're young and have healthy immune systems. I don't give a fuck. So you're, ready, you're, you're, you're ready to move on and get it cracking. You know, obviously, like, I, you know, I, I want to abide by the rules of society and make sure that we're all, you know, <laughs> you don't, don't sound like it as your eyes just like sag, you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that like, listen, it's hard. I'm not going to lie. Like this quarantine is like, it's necessary. And I'm obviously going to, to go by the rules. Bye, sweetie. Um, I'm going to go by the rules. But was, wait, 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 hold up one second. Liz just walked by and you said, Bye, sweetie. <laughs> it looked like you were talking to me. Liz says hello. My daughter. Um, but uh, I've heard estimates that, you know, first of all, you and I, let's acknowledge, you and I picked the two careers that work with, con with people, gyms and stand-up comedy. So yeah. it's not like we're going to, you know, and our industries have to, you know, undergo a major change if we're going to come back. Because people are saying that, you know, things won't really go back. To, I've heard estimates as long as two years. Yeah. So, and, and um, I've heard as short as six months. I don't know. And I think that we just have to prepare. Like I've really been resisting like sit down comedy in the zoom shit. Like it just, it just doesn't feel right. And maybe I'm, I'm sounding antiquated because I was also someone 10 years ago. I was like, I don't want to get on Twitter. It's like, no, you, you have to. You, you, so it's like, we have to be open-minded we have to evolve and we have to evolve with the times um but at the same time i i struggle with not an audience i i love that conversation and that connection with with people you know even when i'm bombing i i, I love to be up there getting my thoughts out and it's really you know if it's going to take a couple years then i guess we have to be open Yo, to when other I, ways. I, did, I did one zoom show and i gotta tell you I love the fact that I didn't, I wasn't getting anything back because I just like to hear myself speak. So it was fine. <laughs> it was, it was, I was totally like comfortable in that setting. Yeah, I'm not there yet. I'm, I'm going <laughs> to stay open. I'm going to stay open. But, um, so you what, know. Like, we have, you know, same circle of friends, but let's say, and some are different levels, right? We got friends who already have uh, a podcast that could probably keep them afloat. Right, like mm -hmm. the money's coming well, my, in. My boyfriend but, hasn't struggled at all. I mean, he's got his his daily. But what about the podcast. people who are in the middle, right? Like you know, and yeah. You know, we got our we got our training or stuff. What about the comedian, the artist, right in the middle, who was on the road, 
who is getting most of their income? Like, what are they doing? I, I don't really, I haven't spoke to any. What, what, what have you spoke I to? I know, anybody? I know a couple of comics that are, you know, they're applying for unemployment right now. And in terms of staying creative, um, they're, they're doing podcasts. It seems like podcasts are the only yeah, way yeah. to go. And everybody's got it. You got to be funny in a different way. Yeah. And um, I, I even venture to predict podcasts will be, be more of the way to supplement stand up than the yeah, Zoom was a stuff. Writing that I think I, that I, I don't know. I could be totally wrong. The Zoom stuff, it's sort of like a band aid. And I think that if anything lasting is going to happen, people are going to start a podcast. Like what you're doing is great. Your podcast is people love yeah, it, it's, yeah, yeah. it's doing well. Um, you know, like I said, my, my boyfriend has a VIP program on his show, and it's, con I mean, if anything, they're getting more yeah, and more keeping people. Keeping the girls but is one of like, the first podcast too that I get and they Yeah, I mean, so they, they, they know what they're doing, but also yeah. it's just a podcast seems to be like a safe thing to do because people have maybe more time. They can listen if they were loyal fans before, which is in, in Keith and Kemda's case, they're either bringing more people in or they're, they're adding more VIP shows and people are like now buying the premium service so they can hear extra. But so there, there is, um, there's definitely like a business model in that. Do I have an interest in starting my own? No, because I am, I am lazy. I'm realizing I am a lazy person. I just want to, I want to, I want a sold out show. I want to get hired to do that show. I want to perform. I want to make my money. I want to leave. I have to open my mind and figure out how I'm going to get through this time. So, yeah. So if you could start something for me. Maybe if you could just say that this is my podcast too. Just yeah, no, you, 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 it's fun that you you jokingly say you're like yeah you are not you're like the one of the biggest hustlers. Well, I think because because all my energy is taken in so many my energy is taken away and obviously like working out is is very important because if I don't do that then I'm not healthy and I can't do anything. So so taking care of my my body and my health is number one. Um, making sure my kids don't fucking fail school that's number two making sure my house is in a mess. My, I mean, my cat just took a shit and the, ugh, I hate this cat. Um, you know, so this Yo, is so like my energy has gone by, by three o'clock. I'm, I'm exhausted, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So like what, what, what do you, what do you, what do you do? You wake up a little earlier and you have your kids fucking do their own thing. Stop being on top of them. Let them, let it be a free for all. Fuck it. I know. They're just, you they're were fine. Dumb. You left, they're you, dumb you, and you, you left to New York. You left to New York at the age of 15. Look at you. You're fine. 18. You make me sound like I was a prostitute. <laughs> sold into yeah. sold into trafficking <laughs> but yeah, us, I didn't, I, I a lot of people a lot of people don't know that ariel castro is your father <laughs> cleveland in the house you love, you love that i used to do a joke that uh was one of those that got booze i'd say how i got a jaywalking ticket in cleveland because it's true i forgot like i've been living in new york over you know almost 25 years crazy and you know, nobody, we all walk whenever we feel like walking in New York City. So I had gone home to Cleveland, maybe whenever this Ariel Castro thing was going on, right? And I, I jaywalked and I got stopped by a cop. And he said that he, he actually didn't give me a ticket, but he said like, oh, he's like, you must not be from around here. I'm like, actually, I grew up in Cleveland Heights. And, the, and I realized he was going to give me a ticket and uh, talked my way out of it. But when I came home, I had a joke and I said, really, Cleveland police? You don't have anything better to do than maybe look for a guy with three women in his basement, and like everyone was like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah, that was a wild story." Yeah, that yeah. was fucking wild and super fucking scary. But fascinating is that scary. I cannot believe someone could keep something going like that for that long. Yeah, I gotta give him some credit, you know. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, that was a Puerto Rican man. Nice, uh, that that's going. Yeah, great. Great. What are you doing to save the race? <laughs> Dirt bag. Dirt bag. I read the book and it, what's that? What's the, what's that? Oh, you so, would read the book. Let's read no, a nice because I, book. I just needed to understand how that was, um, uh, uh, how one is affected by that and then goes on with their life. That shit, like hearing that was so chilling to me. And also I think the fact that he was, a Puerto Rican man bothered me more. Oh, I of think course. More, cause because he looked like, like my uncle. He looked like my uncle. Like he, he was a musician. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know that yeah. look. I know that guy. And then to like, you know, uh, 
I just I, I needed I needed to to learn more about it, and it was like you know some of the captives like actually just succumb to you know to the situation like yep yeah, this is what I'm doing, and then it was hard for them to leave like that mentality. That's weird, mm-hmm. man. You yeah. So think about think about that. Insight. Think about that the next time you complain about being cramped up at home with your kids that you're supposed to love. <laughs> Oh, wait, can I just tell one more? I want to tell your, your audience one more story about you. Um, Sergio loves Brussels sprouts. And I remember, there was one, there was one um, New Year's Eve day party that, I, that you came <laughs> over when Charlie was a baby. And you came over like, oh, thanks for, thanks for inviting us. And then why, do I, you go, why do you, why is my voice like that? No, because, no, you, no. because you sound like that. And you go, you go, these Brussels sprouts are fantastic. What's the recipe? <laughs> I was like, what? I don't know. Maybe it's not that funny. You can cut that out, but no, you like no, I remember that. I was, I was. You just you turned into like you looked like a like like a criminal, and then you sounded like Martha Stewart. You know. <laughs> you you were like blown away by the fact that I was ranting and raving about your Brussels sprouts. It's just like, listen, man. I'm I like, wasn't these are exposed. phenomenal. <laughs> and you were looking at me like, giving me a closed mouth smile, like. Hmm. <laughs> so you have some coke to do off my toilet seat what <laughs> I, I i can't tell you how good it feels to be free from that but every now and then it's it got to be hard in quarantine right like uh, uh, seriously like, i wonder I no i i wonder I, I i asked another comic i was like how how was it like and they told me straight up, they were like, oh, I can't get it anywhere. Because he was telling me that he act, he's like, yeah, it's, it's overpriced. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. <laughs> he says overpriced. And when you finally do get your hands on it, you're like alone in your apartment. You can't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. It's that not like, hey, let's go to a club. There is no club. Let's go outside and put a mask on. Like, what are you going to do? Yeah. But I know it's a tough time, like, for, for everybody. And just trying to, to not do Not for stuff me. You know why? Here. Because I'm zen out. You know what I'm saying? I'm eating my Brussels sprouts. I'm taking care of my animals. I'm in a different plane. Why are you complaining? <laughs> Again, something's never changed. <laughs> I'm reading. I'm reading amazing literature. I'm reading "No Se Lo Digas a Nadie" by Jaime no, Bailey. No, let me. I'm let just me kidding. It was on my bookshelf. I was using it for the camera. <laughs> you using a prop your tables. Know. Your table straight. <laughs> well, that's because my son. Get away. That's because my son is trying to break my concentration do you want to do you want to say hi to sergio no okay what beat it well, you beat so it. benny has to hello tell robert Sir- hello my. hello he said hello <laughs> don't you have schoolwork to do go do your schoolwork but he did this is why i'm not you don't even why read. i'm not rich you don't even read. You just proved get it. out you just proved it hi his voice sounds charming. deep she's doing is well it, yeah. she's, she's got home she's adorable oh uh, you too have fun you hear that charlie you are adorable all right, my, my podcast is breaking concentration here. <laughs> let's let's be honest. We don't we, we don't want to talk about the kids right now. I'm winking my I'm winking my eye, Charlie. Yeah. Ugh. All right. Uh, what else do you want from me? No, that's it. I'm gonna edit this. It's gonna come out beautiful. You're the best. Thanks for doing this. You are the best. Here, wait, Benny. Here, say say bye. Uh, take care. <laughs> All I saw was a hand like this. <laughs> He's eating some oh. cheese. Um, I appreciate your time. Listen, honest, all, all jokes aside, if you need anything, feel free to contact Chris. He'll help you with anything you need. Chris Halal from the Mac. <laughs> Chris Halal? <laughs> con- That's his name, right? <laughs> Pass fell. Oh. <laughs> you just like you just gave him a meat cart. <laughs> what do you think Chris is doing right now? Sergio, uh, how's so, the quarantine uh, treating you? Sergio, do you know that um, back in 1972, they found sediment in a, in a rural area of Missouri where they, where they mistreated he, black he's men? Like a, he's like a walking Snapple cap. Which, with, that's random and back. comes at times when no one's thirsty and no one wants it. Like, yeah. He's like, Sergio, do you realize that uh, 90% of Americans have fecal matter under their fingers? <laughs> <I'm> like, what? <laughs> right? Oh my god! So me, me and Kyle have a friend who I love this dude. I think he's a great dude. He's actually very knowledgeable. 
But he just shows the most random shit. Random stuff. And it's just like, he'll call your name and you feel like you're in trouble. He's like, yeah, we're quarantined and it's six feet distance. I'll have you know that you actually need seven and a half feet. (laughs) And then he'll just look at you like this. And you're like, okay. You're like, oh, wow. That's an interesting, very interesting fact. Good <laughs> anyway, to know. Kyle, thank you for doing the show. Um, thank plug you. In, it's Ocasio Kyle. It's Ocasio Instagram. Kyle on everything. It's on Instagram, Twitter, and I just recently, to the horror of my children, joined TikTok. Yeah, I'm, please. Mm, you're not going to get any followers except... Damn, I don't you're doing know. TikTok? Ugh. I don't know. I haven't done it yet. I'm I haven't so done close it yet. To I just I just signed I, in, but but yeah, all my social media is at Ocasio. I gain two thousand followers on TikTok every day. <laughs> yeah, no one cares that you're on TikTok, literally. Damn. I have to go, I have to go tag. I have to go beat some children. So thank you for having oh, me yeah. on. And uh, <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye. Peace. Make sure I save this. All right. You're a hat. So I should I can hang up, right? Yeah, you're good. Thank you. Okay. Bye! <laughs>